Since I started running marathons back in 2012, I've completed 81 of them, both on road and on trail. We're not including anything over 26.2 in this list. So no ultras, uh, 81 marathons, 10 minutes, here we go. We're gonna go from slowest to fastest. Back in 2017, I ran two three-day events and day three of the Atlantic Coast Challenge is my slowest ever marathon. Day three of the Jurassic Coast Challenge is next on the list. Uh, they're obviously hilly trail marathons and they're run by VO2 events. Five hours and 25 minutes for the Llama Tree Marathon organized by White Star Running in 2021. Then 2018, I did another three day event organized by VO2 Events in Spain. Uh, this was a marathon a day and day two was my slowest in five hours and 22 minutes. I did my 50th marathon and ultra, the Vanguard Way Marathon in uh, 2016. It took five hours and 21 minutes, partly because of some poor navigational errors. Back to Spain for day three of the GR7 trail in Andalusia, five hours, 21. The Purbeck Marathon in Dorset is one of the most scenic marathons I've ever done. My slowest time was five hours and 17 minutes back in 2018. Back to the Jurassic Coast Challenge for day one, which I completed in five hours and 14 minutes in 2017. And a year later, I was back in Dorset for the Crafty Fox Marathon in the same time, 5.14. In 2021, my friend Mark ran his 200th marathon, which was an official event organized by the guys at Sussex Trail Events. In 2017, I got my first experience of running the North Downs Way in the Out and Back North Downs Way Marathon on a boiling hot day. It took me five hours and five minutes. The year before that, I managed one minute faster at the Thames Meander Marathon. I remember doing the first half very comfortably, but dying a horrible death in the second half. I was filming with Martin Yelling at the 2017 London Marathon, which is why it took us just over five hours to complete. My first ever beachy head marathon experience was in 2014. I found it very tough going. It took me four hours and 55 minutes. And I ran the same time at my second go at the Purbeck Marathon in 2016. Back in Cornwall at the Atlantic Coast Challenge in 2017, I ran day two in four hours and 51 minutes. And then we come to my most recent marathon, my ninth Beachy Head Marathon completed in four hours and 50 minutes. Swiftly followed by day one of the Atlantic Coast Challenge. If you get the chance, both the Jurassic and the Atlantic Coast Challenges are a great start to running multi-day events. My first attempt at the gorgeous Purbeck Marathon was in 2015. It took me four hours and 48 minutes to complete as I did day one of the Spanish Trail Challenge. Although all I remember of those three days is how wet it was most of the time. Another fairly regular trail marathon for me is the Stenning Stinger here in West Sussex. This attempt in 2015 took me four hours and 46 minutes. The only time I've ever done the Arran River Marathon was in 2016. I finished in four hours 43. It was an out and back along the river with a big climb at halfway. The inaugural Dorchester Marathon took place in 2017 and it was my wife Victoria's first ever marathon. And I ran with her and we finished in four hours and 41 minutes. My first go at the Llama Tree Marathon was in 2016, where I finished in four hours and 32, and I did the same time for the 2015 Giants Head Marathon, both organized by White Star Running. Day five of Marathon Madness was the only day of that multi-day event by Sussex Trail Events that I did. Uh, a completely flat run, but it still took me four hours, 31 minutes. Back to the Beachy Head Marathon again, and in 2016, I managed four hours and 28 minutes. And the same year, I ran a very flat run along the Thames called the Breakfast Run, which took me four hours and 27 minutes, so just one minute faster. In 2018, we ran Victoria's second marathon in Paris, finishing in four hours 23. It took me four hours 22 to get round a very hilly Bath Running Festival marathon in 2016. 
My very first trail marathon was back in 2014 when I ran the Farnham Pilgrim Marathon in four hours and 19 minutes. And the only time I've ever tried none hydration powder, never again. Another flat out and back course, I ran the Wickham Whistler Marathon in 2016, took me four hours and 18 minutes. My second go at the Vanguard Way Marathon in 2020 saw me improve my time somewhat over the previous attempt. I came in seventh place in four hours and 15 minutes and the Hilly Dorset Invader Marathon in 2015 took me a slightly faster four hours and 12 minutes. Another beachy head marathon this time from 2018, which I completed in four hours and five minutes. As the country slowly began to open up after the pandemic in late 2020, I ran the Buell Water Marathon in East Sussex in four hours and two minutes. And as we approach my 40 sub four hour marathons, we have two marathons, which I finished in four hours and one minute, which is another beachy head marathon in 2015 and White Star Running's Bad Cow Marathon in 2016. We are halfway through now, so it's a good time to say if you are enjoying the video, finding it useful or interesting, then please do click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out. Right, let's crack on with the next 40 marathons. This includes lots of flat road marathons and plenty of hilly trail marathons, like these two Stenning Stinger marathons that I did in 2017 and 2019, both of which I completed seconds apart in three hours and 58 minutes. In 2021, I coached Victoria to her first sub four hour marathon. We crossed the line in three hours, 57 minutes. Another Sussex trail events race. I did the wide water marathon in Lansing, West Sussex in 2019. And my second fastest Stenning Stinger trail marathon was three hours and 55 minutes in 2016. After Victoria's very first sub four hour marathon in 2021, we went back to Paris in 2022 and Victoria knocked 10 minutes off her previous time for a London and Boston qualifier. Last year, I was back at the Stenning Stinger Marathon. Three hours, 44 minutes is my fastest time on that course. My seventh Beachy Head Marathon in 2021 took me three hours, 43, my third fastest time on that course. My very first marathon 12 years ago took me the same amount of time, three hours, 43 minutes for the Paris Marathon. Another three hours, 43 marathon, just a few seconds faster was my 2014 Lisbon Marathon. A very hot day, an undulating course. I didn't really enjoy it, if I'm honest. We're approaching my fastest beachy head marathon. This one from 2017 comes in at three hours and 38 minutes. I did my first ever UK marathon, my third marathon in all, in three hours, 38 minutes in Milton Keynes. Another very hot day, another undulating course, died a horrible death in the second half of that race. We're now into the top 30 fastest marathons and the Heartbreaker Marathon in the New Forest no longer exists, but I did that in 2016 in three hours and 37 minutes. Yet another hot day, not quite so undulating, but Paris does have its hills. Three hours 37 for my third marathon in 2014. My fastest and proudest beachy head came during the pandemic when we were set off in waves. I managed three hours and 37 minutes, which is very decent when you throw in the 1300 meters of elevation gain. My 10th marathon was the 2014 Portsmouth Coastal, which I finished in three hours, 35 minutes. It's another one of those races, which is technically a trail race, but the terrain is mostly flat and runnable. In 2019, I crashed and burned at the Paris Marathon. I was going out for a fast time, but I simply wasn't fit enough. And I came in in three hours, 33 minutes for my 25th fastest marathon. Richmond Park is a beautiful multi-terrain marathon, not without its hills. In 2015, I managed to complete it in three hours and 32 minutes. 
I went back to Portsmouth for the Portsmouth Coastal in 2019 and managed a slightly better time than five years previously, this time finishing in three hours and 31 minutes, despite some severe cramp in the last two kilometers. It's not my fastest Portsmouth though. South End Pier Marathon was great fun, 11 times up and down the pier. It's the first of the 22 marathons I've finished under three and a half hours in this list, crossing the line in three hours, 29 minutes. It's followed by the first marathon I managed in sub 3.30. It was my second marathon ever, uh, the Paris Marathon in 2013. The Viking Coastal is a very flat marathon run on a coastal wall in Kent. 2018 was my second visit. I managed three hours and 27 minutes and was rather disappointed. We're now into my top 20 fastest marathons. The London Marathon in 2018, many will remember as a scorcher of a year. I set out aiming for a fast time, but I died after halfway in the heat and eventually finished in three hours 24. And I ran the same time in very different conditions during the pandemic when I ran the 2020 virtual London Marathon in a how Gale. I ran 3.24 for the third time at the Berlin Marathon in 2022. This had been planned as a sub three hour attempt, but going into it, I knew I was nowhere near ready. Despite this, I started out at sub three pace and just dropped off every mile after that. Just a few weeks later, I ran the London Marathon, and although this was a slightly better performance, I still dropped off badly at the end, finishing in three hours 23. Another of those flat trail marathons. In 2015, I ran the Phoenix year-end marathon on the Thames path near Hampton Court in three hours, 22 minutes. And I did rather better on my second visit to the Richmond Park Marathon in 2016, when I took seven minutes off my previous time with another three hours, 22. Three trail or multi-terrain marathons in a row here because in 2018, I ran my fastest Portsmouth Coastal Marathon in a time of three hours, 21. It was also my 100th marathon and ultra. I struggled a lot towards the end of the 2016 Paris Marathon and just missed out on sub 320. The year before, I was in Italy for the Florence Marathon. It was a superb experience and I just managed to sneak in under 3.20 for my 10th fastest marathon. Two years later, I was back at the Paris Marathon for a sixth time and made it in three hours and 19 minutes. There are just two multi-terrain marathons left in this list, but the Phoenix year-end marathon from 2014 is the last one that I actually ran on dirt trails. I was very surprised to get a PB that day of three hours and 18 minutes. I got the same time, albeit a few seconds faster a year later for my very first London Marathon in 2015. It was freezing cold, but the atmosphere was everything I'd hoped for for my first London. I also ran my second fastest Paris Marathon in 2015, three hours and 16 minutes on a beautiful spring day in Paris. Paris was my PB for two months until I ran my fastest multi-terrain marathon, which was the Kent Coastal Marathon in three hours and 13 minutes for third place and a new marathon PB. We are now into the top four fastest marathons. In 2016, I put a lot of training and a lot of effort into my second London Marathon and was very pleased to come away with a PB of three hours and nine minutes. And that was my PB for the next four years until I decided to give it another go at the Goodwood Marathon in 2020. I was absolutely delighted to finally break three hours for the first time at the Goodwood Marathon. It was a bit of a sprint to the line though because my watch read 400 meters short, but I did make it in two hours, 58 minutes, 57 seconds. It was three years before I tried again. In May 2023, I ran the Manchester Marathon for the first time. Despite a capitulation at 20 miles, I still finished in two hours, 57 minutes and 44 seconds. But that was not a PB because a couple of weeks before, I had run my 11th Paris Marathon and finished in two hours, 55 minutes and 42 seconds. And that's it, 81 marathons, 150 marathons and ultras, three sub three hour marathons, plus one on the treadmill as well, 17 100 milers. What is your best time for a marathon? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you all again on the start line in 2024. Take care everyone, bye-bye.